Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. You went through a crazy experience yeah, last year. Right now we're talking, I'm sorry, I'll pre- no, preface it with this. Good. I think it's great. Right now we're talking in the context of COVID-19, coronavirus, right? right? Mm-hmm. But our lives are filled with other distresses and mm-hmm. difficulties right. and times of testing. And what you're about to tell this story is, I hope, going to unlock some sort of faith, contagious faith, to see that God is mm-hmm. in control. Amen. Tell me about this near-death experience that you had last year. Okay, well, uh, and I'm going to back up even more. Okay. Um, uh, because I, I knew to, you uh, would. Yeah, exactly. I like to talk. Uh, but <laughs> what I wanted to share is this. Um, uh, you know, the first time that I went to, uh, to Asia okay. uh, many, many years ago, um, 2005, I think, was the first time I went to Asia. I'd been on other mission trips, but not Asia. Uh, in 2005, I went to Asia, and I was um, in the Philippines, and I was in Mindanao, a very unreached area. There was 13 unreached tribes, and we were actually going to the areas of the unreached tribes. Uh, came back with malaria. and wow. um, You came uh, back with came malaria. Came back with malaria, okay. uh, and that almost killed me. Um, and it was uh, such a terrible experience. I spent a week in the hospital and, uh, and the, the fever and all the things. Anyway, just almost died from that. Um, and, and then actually for the next five or six trips in a row, um, I got really, really ill. You were living um, in America going on short yes. trips. Yes. So I would go three to four times a year because wow. I was okay. a missions pastor. So they were sending me there. We were planting churches. We'd stay there. One time we stayed a month, uh, gotcha. planted church. We were in four countries, planting churches and all these places and Bible schools cool. had a okay. team. And then, so I would have a local team and a team from America that went with me and we planted churches that way long distance. And of course, supported lots of missionaries yeah. during that time as well. We were able to come back. Get that was at excited. Church 212. Right? That was at Church 212. Okay. And I was missions pastor at Church 212 first for uh, five years. And then I became the lead pastor gotcha. of another campus okay. later. Uh, but anyway, um, people actually asked me after I'd, I'd actually gotten sick several times uh, after going to the mission field. That was the worst one. But I actually had a relapse of, of malaria, which can happen within four years. Okay. Um, and then there was uh, some other things where people actually begin to say, don't you think you're better off just raising money for, for missions and you know not going? Because yeah. obviously God doesn't want you to go um, if, if you continue to get sick. And, and I thought to myself, I thought about that for a while. And I said, I just can't find a scripture and verse that hmm. says, you know, you know, if you keep go getting sick, into all the you know, world, yeah. unless uh, it's not right. convenient so for you. If you keep you, getting sick, then you like shouldn't it. go. You yeah. know, I just couldn't get that. I kept sure. having a burden to go to the nations. And so, so anyway, uh, fast forward, uh, I had actually had several good, really good years. I'd actually gone about, five or six years in a row with no major illness of any kind. And I what, thought, hey, I must have built up the, to, yeah, exactly. I to, must have built up the, um, you know, immunity or something, something like bug. that. You, yeah. got some, so, you got some extra from, worms inside. Right, take exactly. Care of you. <laughs> so the last decade, and I've, I've been doing great. No, no real illnesses okay. to speak of. Wonderful. I think I had one episode in there. That was it. But uh, moved here, and, and, and I have to preface this by saying that so many people told me when I moved here, um, including missionaries, and I'm trying not to, to be negative. Actually, one missionary got really offended at me, actually, uh, after uh, after I had really, really offended, after I had shared uh, with them about, uh, the, I mean, I actually used their own words, but uh, about the fact that, um, you know, some people had told me, you know, uh, they, they had actually been here for a while, had never led anyone to Christ. I, I remember you so talking so about forth. this. Yeah. But I think and it's then, okay to be sharing those things without mentioning their names. I yeah. Think there's a and lot I didn't, of I didn't sentiment. mention their name, but, yeah. they, but they, they did get offended about it, that it was mentioned, um, but even though no one knows them that knows uh, me. And, but, and they said what? Uh, well, they just said, um, uh, well, you, well, did, you not, you know, it's okay. It's, 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 they said it didn't show the love of God for you to paint us in a negative light, even though no one knew what you were talking about, we knew what you were talking about. Okay, okay, that's how they felt. And and what I was talking about, and, and this comes to bear what we're talking about here, is the fact that I had really been surprised to find out many missionaries here in Thailand have never led a tie to Christ. Yeah, okay. I was actually in complete shock. Um, and um, uh, it was not just them. It was several people. Oh, this um, kind of that, permeated that said, the missionary culture. Yeah, exactly. Here. In fact, the, the excuse that people use, and I'm sorry to say, I'm just going to be straightforward, but the excuse that people use for not doing it is, well, this is home base and I reach other countries from here. And and they basically are saying this, we don't want to bring danger to where we live, where our family is. So we go to other places. This is home base. And I don't go for that. Um, well, I'll pause I'm, you right there yeah. and say too, we, we've, we're 150 plus years deep with missionary presence in Thailand right. and 0.7% Christian. Right. I mean, something is not clicking here. Something's what is going anymore. on? Right. So people are receiving Christ in Vietnam and, and, yep. and in China and, and Bhutan, Nepal, uh-huh. everywhere. 
they, they'll receive Christ here too. And we were actually told uh, that uh, we were actually laughed at when I said, my heart is not just to, re yes, we are reaching Vietnam. Yes, we are reaching Laos. We do, we are planting Bible schools in actually 12 surrounding nations to here, uh, Malaysia, other places. I, I travel all the time. I've been in seven countries in the last six months. We, we do those things. That's important. But I said, it's wrong. This, this is me personally. On judgment day, I don't want to stand there before God and be a part of the several thousand missionaries who came from Thailand and didn't reach it. And I just don't want to be one of those people. I don't think God's going to throw yeah. me into hell, but I just don't want to be the one that answers to God as to why we didn't reach Thailand when yeah. we all lived here. It makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. So we have all these giftings. And so we went out and on the street and, and began to witness and begin to lead people to Christ and people got saved. But, but I wanted to say this before I tell the story about life and death. People, there was a great many people that told me, um, don't do it. Hmm. When you go out and begin to try to reach ties, you're going to come under such a great attack. Hmm. People are going to put curses on you. There are spiritual things that are going to happen to you. There are physical things. There are going to be family problems. There are going to be sickness. There are going to be all these things. And they gave me such a list of fear, of things that are so fearful, um, to try to discourage me from doing ministry. And 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 here's the truth. They didn't lie. I mean, uh, <laughs> pretty much happen, every right? single thing they said did happen to me. Uh, but uh, it did. But but at the same time, I don't make. And let me give you a good biblical example. Paul Paul Agabus came to Paul didn't he, and, and 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 gave a prophecy. And he said, whoever whoever and he bound himself in a cloth. And he said, whoever owns this cloth is going to be bound just like I'm bound here in chains though. And he said, and, and, and of course it belonged to Paul. So Peter and all the apostles, what did they do? They gathered around in fear, just like missionaries do here. And they said, don't go, don't go, don't go. He's never wrong. This prophet is right. Agabus said, if you're going to be in jail, you know, if you do this. And of course, Paul said, I'm not only ready to go to jail, I'm ready to die. Yeah. God has called me here. So we should never make a decision hmm. uh, about whether or not we're going to do ministry based on what uh, might happen, other right? people saying you might get sick or you might die or somebody might put a curse on you or, or whatever. So having said that, I went forward in it. And, uh, and, 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 and actually a group of people actually accused us of, um, of, uh, not listening to the Holy spirit. And, and that's the reason bad things happened to us. Uh, I was playing basketball with a bunch of guys, uh, broke my ankle, okay. um, shattered my ankle. And, uh, uh so you're not, not supposed to play basketball anymore. Is yeah, that what exactly. the thing is? Play no more playing basketball. And, uh, you might break your leg. Yeah, exactly. The There's kind of theory. You're exactly. And it, when you really think about that, it's so silly. The reason I broke my ankle is not because there was a devil that was hurting me. It's because I jumped up and when I came down, my my ankle was in the wrong direction. And <laughs> you're also not 20 years younger yeah, than you used to be. Yeah, I'm 42 years old. It had nothing to do with demons. It had everything to do with my age and jumping up in the air. So yeah. coming down wrong. <laughs> uh, but uh, six days later, um, I woke up and was completely deaf. Um, I uh, could not hear anything. I'm okay. talking, I could be clapping right when next was this? to my when head. Was this? this was uh, September the 30th, actually. Wow. Okay. Um, completely deaf um, and uh, felt very hot. But the only thing I noticed at the time was I couldn't hear. Uh, I felt weird. I felt nauseated, uh, but I was completely deaf. I began to call out uh, to my wife. I began to call out to try to get someone to help. And, uh, uh, and of course, there was no help. Uh, Heather teaches out of school. Her and my daughter were gone. And, and, and so uh, I got so sick, I had to actually crawl downstairs um and then i had to get on the phone now you got to understand i was at this time brand new and i didn't know that there wasn't a 911 button yeah, and yeah. i didn't know any of those things i yeah. didn't know even how to call for help so um i googled um while i was still conscious i googled um uh, one of the hospitals and called the number and i couldn't hear so you can just imagine you're completely deaf you feel like you're yeah, about to die and you dial the number and you hit it and you put it on speakerphone and you can't understand, you can't hear them. Let, so I didn't well, know what they were hearing. It's going to be in Thai, so you might as well be. Yeah, there. exactly. No, and so English. I begin to, well, I begin to yell out loud, you know, uh, I'm deaf. I can't hear you. I don't know if you're getting this. I'm wow, dying. Really? Uh, and I begin to just say my address over and over and over and over and over. So I continued to say my address, having no idea. But I looked and it, and it said the minutes were still running. So I was just so hoping they were the hearing line, it. Yeah. yeah. So I just kept saying my address over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, when I felt myself beginning to pass out, I opened the front doors. And as I was stepping across the threshold, I, I passed out and fell onto the um, porch wow. and just laying there completely out cold. Um, the next thing I remember when I woke up, I was actually on an ambulance. Okay. So they actually found me. Okay. Uh, and I was completely packed in ice from head to toe, just where my face could be seen. Just ice. Really? Just freezing cold. Because uh, your and, body was and, just uh, so hot. Yeah, I was actually 105.5. Uh, um, uh, when and I said you were hot a while ago, I did not mean that. 
<laughs> I know. And you know, the thing is, they told me later, I could have went permanently deaf. Uh, what happens is it sears those uh, little hairs that you have in your ear and you can actually go permanently deaf wow. from if it's, if you're that way long enough. Okay. But I had gone deaf because of the high temperature is what so had they happened. they packed you in ice so they like They packed me in ice. They had me going, yes, just like salmon or just like a dead person. And they were driving me down the road. And, uh, and then I, I woke up and I began to begin to vomit. And the lady was very nice. She spoke English and she began to tell me, you're going to be okay. And actually, I feel like it, it was almost like the Lord because I could see her looking at me with actually compassion. And, and she said, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to make it. It's okay. You'll be okay. You know, and she comforted me all the way to the hospital, wow. at which time I found out I would not be okay. Um, I got inside. And, <laughs> doctors uh, are not that uh, generous. Yeah, with no, they're not that generous. And uh, the nurse doctors. was completely lying. But uh, anyway, when they did the blood test, they did the work. They found out I was in complete total kidney failure. Okay. In fact, I had five organs failed. Um, I had, uh, so do you have, uh, you have documents to prove this? Oh, absolutely. Because there's a lot of people going to be I listening. Have all the documentation. I would love to post them on your Facebook or wherever you would like. Don't yeah, bombard me with that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I think there's a lot of people are going to hear this yeah. story and think, Oh, come on, Chris, man, you're yeah. exaggerating. Yeah, and, no. um, but I know you have all this documentation, yeah, doctor signatures, yes. all of it said, you are not going to make it another Correct. Two, three, four days. I can't remember. In fact, what it was. Uh, well, they said it could be within two hours or two oh, days. Oh, okay. um, in fact, the way he said it was, "I'm sorry, um, you you came in too late, and we cannot save you." That's the words he used, and he patted me on the belly and walked out. Missions Pulse. Know God's heart. Join His mission. This podcast is powered by Within Reach Global. Subscribe, watch, and listen on YouTube today. Visit missionspulse.com.